In this video, you'll be learning how to play Warhounds, a strategy game set on the great island continent of Doggerland, where an epic war has broken out between the nations of dogs that inhabit the land. You will play as the leader of one of the twelve nations, each with its own set of abilities, functions, costs, and economies. The winner is the nation with the most victory paws. Visit our website at astrologicgames.com and play for free on tabletopia.com. Start the game by placing the year marker on the year one space. Shuffle the policy tiles and place one face up on each of the empty spaces provided on the main board. Shuffle the stacks of early year and later year tiles for each type of technology and place one tile face up on each of the appropriate spaces on the main board. Shuffle the trade tiles and place one face up on each empty space and place the trade markers on the spaces marked plus one. Shuffle the loan tiles and place one face up on each empty space and then place the loan certificates on the correct spaces. Then, place the rail tiles, trench tiles, and road tiles on the spaces provided under the map. This area of the main board is the Maritime Arena. The number of available ports in the Maritime Arena is equal to the number of players minus one. The area above the Maritime Arena is the Aerial Arena. Aerial spaces are available according to the available terrain regions on the map. Regions are the terrain or marine spaces found on the map, with the number of terrain regions available in each game being determined by the number of players according to the rulebook on page 4. All marine regions are always available. Players will now choose a color and matching player board. All of the six player boards are double-sided for a total of 12 factions to pick from. Take the matching player pieces, combat cards, and general tile for the faction selected, and place the action discs, casualty marker, metal marker, economy track discs, planes, bombers, ships, subs, guns, tanks, and troops on the appropriate spaces on the player board. Determine the turn order however you wish and place the turn track markers for the corresponding players on the turn track accordingly. Players will place their metal marker on the starting space of the metal track and their casualty marker on the starting space of the casualty track. Collect the starting resources represented by the icons at the top of your player board. The small cubes represent one of that resource, and the large cubes represent ten. The green cubes have three sizes, with values 1, 10, and 50, going in order of increasing size. All of the icons for the game can be found on page 20 of the rulebook. Find the starting units listed under Deploy, and set these units aside. Take the units listed under Build, and place them on the yellow spaces that correspond to those units on the player board. In turn order, players will now place their starting units on one of the six outer regions on the map, along with one adjacent region, spreading the units among them however they desire. And place the ship in a marine region adjacent to your starting terrain region. You start with 13 action discs that are available to use, and 5 action discs that are not. Set these 5 aside. There are 12 action spaces that are located next to your general. On your turn, you will place an action disc on one of these spaces and carry out the action shown. Notice there are three rows with four actions in each row. You may place an action disc in the same row as your previous turn, or in the row below it. But you may only place an action disc in the row above the one where you took your previous action if you permanently remove one of your available action discs from the game. For example, you may take an action in the top row with your first turn, but if on your second turn you place an action disc in the middle row, you would have to remove one of your other action discs from the game in order to perform an action in the top row on future turns this year. There are two factions in the game that do not follow this rule. The communists are the exact opposite and must take their actions in the same row or the row above the action disc they placed previously, and the anarchists follow no chain of command and may take any action at any time. You may take the same action as many times as you wish, with the number of actions available in a given year being limited by the total number of stars and stripes on your general. With this general, you can only place 8 discs on action spaces in a given year because this general has 6 stripes and 2 stars, with the large stripe representing 5. The reason why you start with 13 action discs at your disposal is because action discs can serve more than one purpose. For example, they can be permanently placed on policies or technologies on the main board in order to improve your strategy. You may promote a new general with more stars and stripes to increase the number of available actions you can take each year. Below the action spaces is where you will find your economy. Your economy discs start in the middle of each track. Your income will be determined by the positions of these discs and the regions you control on the map. You can adjust the positions of these discs to increase either the amount of money or the amount of a given resource that you collect during income. You also have 8 combat cards. Remove the 7 and 8 card from the deck and set them aside. 
The number of cards you can have is defined by your general. You can promote a new general to get more of the cards back into your deck. However, the Anarchists start with combat cards 1 through 7. The game is played over four years. Each year, players will, in turn order, complete one action until all players have either passed or have no more available actions to take. During cleanup, remove all action discs from the action spaces, reveal ships and submarines, new policies and technologies become available, loans may be paid off, players receive income, and the turn order is changed according to the amount of money on each player's player board. The player with the most money will be first, and the rest of the players will follow in descending order. The year track marker is moved forward and players begin taking actions in the next year. Now let's take a closer look at the actions that can be performed. With the tech action, you can place one of your discs on the tech action space of your player board and then place another action disc on the desired technology on the main board. There are three types of technologies, aerial, maritime, and terrain. You can only purchase technologies that are available in the current year or the years prior. The cost of the technologies are found on your player board. Notice that tanks, submarines, and bombers are not available unless you purchase the technologies that allow you to build them. With the trade and loan action, choose either to trade resources or to take a loan. With trade, trade resources according to one of the six available trade rates found on the main board. The trade rates are the same for both resources shown. For example, this trade rate says 5 to 2 and shows food and able bodies. Therefore, you may trade two food for five able bodies, or you may trade two able bodies for five food. You may perform this trade as many times as you want. The plus one equals and minus one spaces to the right of each trade rate reflect how many extra, if any, or how many fewer resources you get with each trade. Move this down after you complete a trade. This space shows a plus one, so you could trade two able bodies for six food. Doing this twice yields twelve food. If you choose to take a loan instead, then you place an action disc on a loan of your choice at the bottom right of the main board and collect the amount shown for the given loan. If this is your first loan, then you take the first loan certificate tile. If this was your second loan, you would take the second loan certificate tile. You can return these certificates to the main board by paying off the loan at the end of the year, and you can take as many loans as you want throughout the game, but if you already have two loan certificates, you have to pay one off before you can take another. With the policy action, you place one of your available discs on one of the five types of policies, science, commerce, industry, strategy, or recruitment. Each type of policy has one available in the first two years in the bottom row, with a second one in the top row not being available until the third and fourth years. The policies can be found on page 16 of the rulebook. The draft and train action being shown here is unique, as some players have their draft actions separate from their train actions. When you draft units, you pay resources equal to the costs shown on your player board for an amount of troops up to the number of stripes on your general. When you train, you add XP cubes to your units, making them more powerful in combat. You realize that the cost of the troops is too great to draft at this time, and you want to have as many units as possible when you go to train them. So you decide it would be better to first shift your economy in order to gain resources immediately and set up a more unique economic strategy. You may only choose one economy track to shift and you may shift that economy as many spaces as you have stripes on your general. Gain the amount shown below the disk of the given resource, in this case, four able bodies. Notice the zero dollars symbol above the disk, which now means that your able body track no longer provides money during income collection, which will be discussed in more detail later on in the video. Now that you have some able bodies, you decide it's time to draft and train. Draft only applies to troops. Each troop costs six dollars, two able bodies, and one ammo. You choose to draft three troops by paying six able bodies and three ammo, as well as eighteen dollars. Troops only take one hit to defeat, which is denoted by the circle icon next to the draft cost. Place the troops in the gold circles above where you purchased them. Next, train all units that are in the gold spaces on your player board by placing a white XP cube next to each one. In combat, units with XP cubes have more health and take one additional hit for each XP cube they have in order to be defeated. A unit can have as many XP cubes as the number of hits required in defeating them. For example, a troop can have a maximum of one XP cube because it takes one hit to defeat a troop, and guns can have a maximum of three XP cubes because they require three hits to defeat. Now that the units are all trained and ready, you can take the deploy action and place a number of them up to your general's stripes amount onto a suitable region of the map that contains any of your units. 
The four troops and the gun go onto a terrain region you control, along with their XP cubes. The plane is placed in the aerial arena in any of the terrain or marine boxes, excluding any terrains that are not available for the given player count. These boxes correspond to all of the regions found on the map, and represent the airspace above those regions. The maritime arena found below the aerial arena is where players will conceal the location of submarines and ships. When deploying a ship or submarine, you may place it directly onto the map for everyone to see, or you can take one of your ship or submarine tiles and place it face down on an available port in the maritime arena. Secretly choose a marine tile that corresponds to a desired region on the map and place this face down below the chosen ship or submarine tile. If you want to build a ship, submarine, gun, tank, plane, or bomber, you would take the build action and build as many units as up to your general's amount of stars. The cost for the tank and the gun are the same, and they share the same gold circle spaces above the guns when being built. The same goes for the costs and gold spaces for the ships and subs, as well as the planes and bombers. When you build a unit, place it on the gold space provided for that unit on your player board. With this faction, you cannot build more than two guns or tanks combined, because there are only two gold circles for you to place readied guns or tanks. This faction also has room for two readied ships or submarines combined, and only one ready plane or bomber at a time. Building the guns, tanks, planes, and bombers are pretty straightforward. Pay the costs shown and place the unit on the gold space provided to show that it is ready to be deployed. When the ships and submarines are built, however, you pay the cost shown and place a ship or submarine tile on the gold rectangle face down. Your opponents won't know if you built a ship or a submarine until it is deployed to the map or revealed in the maritime arena. When you sack and promote, you fire your current general and then pay the cost shown on the action space allowing you to choose one of the sides of your general tile to be your new general. When a general is fired, it can no longer be used for the rest of the game. This will instantly add combat cards to your combat deck according to the number of stripes on your general. This general has 8 stripes, so you add the 7 and 8 cards to your combat deck, and it also increases the number of stars and stripes for drafting, building, shifting economy, deploying, moving, and taking actions. Your last general only allowed for 8 actions a year, whereas this general has a total of 11 when adding up stars and stripes, so you may take 11 actions each year effective immediately. Finally, you feel confident and powerful enough to take the move and attack action. The cost for moving units can be found in the same box where the cost for building or drafting that unit can be found. However, you may only move as many units as you have stars on your general. You must pay the movement cost for each unit that you move, however, you can improve movement costs in the following ways. You can buy a road by paying the cost shown on your player board, and place the road in between a region containing your units and the region you are moving to. This decreases the movement cost by one food per unit moved across the road. Once a road is built, any player may use it. You can upgrade a road to a rail by paying the cost shown on your player board, which reduces the total movement cost for all of your units moving across the rail to the cost of only one unit, with the most expensive unit being that cost. Roads and rails cannot be used in marine regions. The number of units that can participate for you in battle is equal to your general's number of stars. Every unit has to be in the same region as the units you are fighting, except for the guns, which have a range of 1. You move a troop with 1 XP cube for 2 food into a region containing the Anarchists, 1 troop, and 1 gun. Your gun can participate as well for being only 1 region away. Before combat, players take their combat cards into their hands and select one to be used for all of their participating units. The combat cards have three sections. The top section, which is the aerial section, uses the 12-sided dice and applies to aerial combat. The middle section uses 20-sided dice and applies to ships, submarines, and guns. And the section at the bottom, which uses the 6-sided dice, applies to troops and tanks. There are three types of 20-sided dice. The green dice is the basic dice used for guns, ships, and submarines. The brown and red 20-sided dice are the scatter dice and the focus dice you must purchase the artillery upgrades technology in order to use these dice in combat. The green and brown 20-sided dice have some sides with multiple values. These hits have to be applied to separate units in battle. For example, if you roll a 1-1, one, one, you have to apply one hit to one of your opponent's units and the other hit to a separate unit. If your opponent only has one unit, you only apply one hit to that unit. The sections are carried out in order with the aerial combat going first, the guns, ships, and subs after that, and the infantry and tanks go last. 
There are no planes or bombers participating in this battle, so players reveal one card to be used for their guns and troops. Carry out the gun combat first, starting with the attacker. The middle section of your combat card states that you may pay two ammo per die used in combat. You may use as many die as you have guns participating in battle. You have one gun, so you pay two ammo and roll one die. If you're unhappy with the result, this card states that you may pay three able bodies to re-roll it. You roll a one, which represents one hit. You may apply this hit to any unit you want. You choose the anarchist's gun. Place one wound cube next to the anarchist's gun, and now the anarchists can pay ammo to roll a die for their gun. The anarchists roll a three, which is applied to your gun. This would normally be sufficient enough to defeat your gun, but your gun has one XP cube and thus survives. After placing wound cubes on your units, players resolve troop combat. Your combat card states that you may roll one die for each of your troops participating in combat. You have one troop, so you roll one six-sided die. You roll a four, and can pay ammo equal to the number of hits you want to apply to your opponent's units, but only have one ammo left. Your combat card states that you apply two hits for each ammo used, and so you decide to apply two hits to your opponent's gun. This is sufficient to destroy the anarchist's gun, which brings up an important aspect of combat. When a unit falls in combat, the player places that unit back in their supply and moves their casualty marker on the casualty track a number of spaces equal to the value shown on the player board for the fallen unit, and the player that defeated the unit moves that many spaces on the metal track. The anarchists move their casualty marker three spaces on the casualty track for the fallen gun. You move your metal token three spaces on the metal track for having been the player that defeated the gun. At the end of the game, players will lose points according to their casualty track, and they will gain points according to their metal track. Keep this in mind as you weigh your victories against your defeats. If you reach the end of the metal or casualty track, take the appropriate badge or medic token to show how many times you've gone past the end of the track, and then begin back at the start of the track. If you still have ammo to spend and you want to continue the battle, you may choose to select another combat card, along with the defender, and carry out the sections on the new cards in the same order as before. You may do this only once per combat. After combat, discard the combat cards used by creating a discard pile near your player board. These cards won't be available until you have no cards left in your combat deck. Then take the discard pile back into your hand. You can improve your troops on the map by placing them in a trench. Pay the cost shown on your player board and place the trench in the region containing your troops, and place the troops on the top of the trench tile. Troops that are in a trench require one additional damage to be defeated, similar to having an XP cube. Only troops can be placed inside a trench. Starting with aerial combat, it's important to mention that planes can only combat other units in the aerial arena. If you want to attack a unit on the map from an aerial arena, you must purchase the bomber technology and build a bomber, which is capable of attacking units in the terrain and marine regions on the map. You decide to attack the anarchist's plane with your plane. You both select combat cards and reveal them simultaneously. Looking at the top section of this card, you see that there are two dice symbols. The symbol on the left is the amount that you add to your maneuver roll if you are the attacker, and the symbol on the right is the amount that you must roll in order to successfully hit your opponent. Players begin combat by rolling a 12-sided dice to see who outmaneuvers who, starting with the defender, and then pay any amount of oil desirable in order to improve the number that was rolled. Whoever has the highest number gets the chance to roll for hits. The anarchists roll a 3 and decide not to spend any oil. Now you go and roll a 12, which you add 3 to because you're the attacker and your combat card states that you add plus 3 to your maneuver roll. You win the maneuver roll and may now roll for hits. You roll a 3, which is greater than the 2 required to be successful, and pay 2 ammo for 2 hits according to your combat card. The anarchists move their casualty marker 2 spaces on the casualty track, and you move your metal marker 2 spaces forward on the metal track. The combat for ships is similar to guns in that you use the middle section of a selected combat card and roll a number of 20-sided die equal to the number of ships you have participating in battle, paying the cost shown for each die used. When using a tank in combat, you use the bottom section of a selected combat card just like a troop, but tanks count for three troops when calculating how many dice to roll and take three hits to defeat. This means a player would move their casualty marker three spaces for losing a tank in combat or move their metal marker three spaces forward on the metal track for defeating a tank in combat. Submarines and bombers are unique because they can attack opponents without being attacked back. This only applies when attacking opponents exclusively with submarines or exclusively with bombers. 
and you use the top section of a selected combat card. If your submarines or bombers are accompanied by another unit type, like a ship or a plane, you deal half as much damage as shown by the dice with the submarine or the bomber, and you use the middle section of a selected combat card. For instance, in this scenario, you attack with only one submarine. You choose a combat card, and the defender does not. According to the top section of this card, you must roll a 12-sided dice and have a value higher than the number on the right side of the card in order to be successful, which is 5, and may spend oil to increase the value of your roll by 2 for each oil spent. If you succeed, you would pay 3 ammo and apply the full amount of damage when applying hits, in this case 2 hits. In this scenario, however, you are attacking with a submarine and a ship, therefore you and the defender will choose a combat card and reveal them simultaneously. Both the submarine and ship use the middle section of the selected combat card. This card states that you may pay 4 ammo for each die used in combat. When you roll a dice for the submarine, you deal half as much damage as the dice result, and then the defender has an opportunity to roll dice and apply damage to your submarine if desired. If your submarine is damaged but not destroyed, you may still conceal the location of your submarine in the maritime arena, but you place the submarine along with the wound cubes on top of the submarine tile in the port. After all players have completed their actions and resolved any combat, remove all action discs from the action spaces, reveal ships and submarines, new policies and technologies become available, loans may be paid off, players collect income, and the turn order is changed. If a submarine is revealed during the cleanup, that player may choose to place the submarine in that location on the map, or choose a new location and secretly select a new marine tile to be placed below the submarine tile in the maritime arena. At the end of each year, players will gain income by counting the total value of each resource represented in the colored squares on the regions they control on the map, and multiplying that value by the value shown on the correlated income track on their player boards. Money is gained in the same fashion, except all four tracks' money values, which are found above your income marker on each track, are added together before being multiplied by the cumulative values of all the green squares they control on the map. White squares in the middle regions denote the resource type that is wild and may be added to one resource type when calculating income. You have control of five terrain regions and one marine region. Looking at your starting terrain region at the top, you have a green square of value 1, a gray square of value 2, and a red square of value 2 as well. The green represents money, the gray represents ammo, and the red represents food. The yellow squares in the other regions are able bodies, and the dark blue is oil. Your total money squares add up to 4, your ammo squares total 5, your food squares total 6, able bodies is only 1, and your oil squares add up to a value of 2. Your player board shows 2 ammo below the disc on the ammo economy track. Multiplying this value with the total value on the main board is 5 times 2 for a total income of 10 ammo. Follow this same process for able bodies, food, and oil. Money, however, is calculated by multiplying the total dollar amounts above all of the economy tracks by the number of green squares controlled on the map. The total dollar amount on your player board is 8 because of the $3 above your food, $2 above your ammo, and $3 above your oil. When multiplied by the green squares on the map, you get 8 times 4, which is 32. Once incomes have been collected, national wealth is calculated and the turn track is reset accordingly with the wealthiest nations going first, and the most impoverished nations going last. At the end of the fourth year, after players gain income, reset the turn track according to wealth one last time, and players will have one final opportunity to pay off any loan debts. Then, move to end game scoring, adding all positive victory paws from Metal Track and Medals of Honor, Current General, Policies, Technologies, Territories controlled, scoring only the territories where you have control of the most regions, not including aerial regions. If players control the same amount of regions, points are split. And wealth, scoring one victory paw per $25. Then, subtract all negative victory paws from casualty track and medic badges, and loan certificates. The canine nation with the most victory paws is the victor of the Great War. If players are tied, whichever is farther ahead on the turn track is the winner. And that's how to play Warhounds. Thanks for watching. You can rate or review Astrologic Games titles on BoardGameGeek.com or visit our website at AstrologicGames.com and play for free online at Tabletopia.com. See you next time.